First of all, we thank God for all that's gone forth to his honor, to his glory. We worship God in the spirit and in truth. This morning, we're going to hear from our missionary priest of Bruin. So prepare your hearts to hear the word of God. Receive it and allow it to have an impact on your life. The Bible tells us that God's word does not return unto him Lord. But it goes forth to accomplish the purpose for which it is sent to receive it this morning. Sure, you're not faster than I am. <laughs> Which page is? And the time drew not that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with thee. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. You know, a lot of times we say that we don't want to be buried here, we don't want to do this, and we don't want to do that. But you know, when the time is approaching, you don't really know where you'll be or whether the Lord calls you home. Nobody knows that. You appropriate something with your family and with your relatives. And it's like yesterday, I went to the young man's uh, viewing, funeral, whichever, and I, I watched the family. The family of the deceased is a beautiful, wonderful family. Of course, we all watched him grow up in this church. He was a love, and he loved everybody that he went near. And you know, he didn't think his time was up. He thought he had more time in life, but he didn't. And not one, not from the littlest to the oldest, knows what time is going to happen. 
or whenever something is going to happen. How many times have you seen someone that you wanted to help or do something for or to buy something for or to do? And they say, oh, I'll help you. I'll help you do this and I'll help you do that. But time isn't always on your side. You go to get something and it's not there. And then you say, well, it wasn't quite the right time. It was the time that you just didn't do it. You should have done what you thought of at that moment. At one moment you may say, I need to pray. There's a reason to pray. It's time for you to pray. Get on your knees and pray. Because time is running short for each and every one of us. We all have a destination. We don't know when the train is going to stop. We don't know what's going to happen to us. Even with our children, it's a day-to-day -day experience. One day they're healthy, the next day they're sick. Then the next day they're running all over and you can't catch them. You know, it's an amazing thing to have children and not to have children. Many, many times I've chased little ones through this church. Many times we've all chased our little ones through this church. And you know, it seems like yesterday I came through the doors. But I didn't realize that that time was going to bother. It flew. I have decorated, I've done everything in this church. I've never been a Sunday school teacher. I don't know, some days I felt like I was intimidated by children because what they want, I give them. And that's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy to give children what they want. But anyway, it's nice to be good to them and to teach them, but you cannot give in to them. And I'm sure Trivia knows what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, being a school teacher is not easy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm trying to convey about this idea of time. It's like all of these seats were filled at one time. They were all filled. Each one has passed through. They have come in and did what they had to do. Bishop Hobbs and Sister Hobbs have taught them well. And Brother Matthew, every Sunday he's there with the Sunday school, teaching us, teaching us the ways that God would have us to do. God knows what we need and how we need it and what we have to give and what we don't have to give. But we're all born with something inside. We're either teachers, ministers, speakers, all of them have come through. And this is like the little airport. They all come flying in, and then they get what they need, they learn what they need to learn, and then there they go. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful time of my life. I'm 83 years old. <laughs> And you know, some days I feel like I'm 30, but I know my body doesn't know it. <laughs> my body will not do what it did a long time ago. Right now, I've slowed down, and I, I take naps in the afternoon. And it's like, oh, it's time for my nap. And I never dreamed I'd be sleeping in the middle of the day. But you know, time has its quest with each one of us. Yeah. And remember, you may be young today, but tomorrow your time is different. Every day, make it like it's the day. This is the day. This is the wonderful day. This is my time. This is what I got to say. That all of the ones that I've prayed for, they're all coming up. This is the time to plant my seeds. No, I planted them a long time ago. Now they're harvesting. I'm watching them. Watching the children come up that I've seen so little and running around. It's just like Onesimus. He come in, he sat on that side, right where you sat, on that side, and he become who he is today. His time was here for a short time. And you see that word comes up every, every second of your life. You see the word time. Is it time for me to pray? Is it time for me to cook? Is it time for me to wash? Anything, time. And we never use that word and listen to it. We never hear it in our hearts. I've, I've tried all night to find something else to say, to talk about, to whatever. And all I can talk about is time. And you know, it's like in the Bible, each minister, each prophet, each, each person, had to do their time, whatever it was, whether it was in jail, whether it was on their knees, whether it was fasting, whether it was, whatever it was. And a mother with no children, 
She prayed and prayed and prayed and wanted a child. But then God made her a mother of many children. Many children. You see, we don't know what time we have. We don't know. We have no idea. We have no expectations. It's like, tomorrow, I think I'll do this and I think I'll do that. Oh, I'm going to do that for sure. Then you get to tomorrow. Oh, I've got to be at the doctor's. No, I've got to be at the hospital. Your life is made up of time. And, you, and it's, it's like the adversary uses all of this to our disadvantage sometimes. Because if we don't stay close to where God has put us, where God stations us, we're all on our station, whether we know it or not. We all have something that God has given us. And it's like, if you see someone that you know really needs a prayer, give them that prayer. Then, don't say, I'll work when I get home. Because when you get home, the time element's in there again. You're either washing, dishes, kids, something. Television, even, will take up your time so that you don't have time to do what you set out to do. Just So it's just amazing. It's amazing. The word has really captured my heart. It's, it's just like it's flourished all of a sudden. My time is now in the winter years. My mind was still where I was a few years ago. Now the coronavirus has stopped us all from gathering and getting together. And with all of this, that was all prophesied. That has been prophesied. That, that, that we would be all separated because the it's like the garden, you have to take the weeds from, from the good stuff. There's some good stuff in there. In the garden, sometimes you see this green plant, you say, gee, that's good. But yes, it was. It was something you couldn't sell. I mean, I nestled, I'll tell you, she can find something in the ground where you would never see it. But I'll tell you, we all grow up differently. We go to the store. It's just like someone said, why do we need mountains? We go to the store and buy things. Well, if it wasn't for that mama, we wouldn't have gone to the store. There wouldn't be a store. Nah. There wouldn't be a place for you to buy it. So, here we go again. The time is there for planting, for sowing, for buying, for each thing that we do. We have to do what we have to do. And it's just, a, it's just amazing. It's just amazing how that God has put that word in my heart and showed me a lot of of my grandchildren because I don't know how many times, oh grandma, oh grandma. And you know, it's like yesterday my granddaughter said to me, she says, you know, you were old when I met you. She says, how can you get any older? <laughs> I laughed, I thought that was cute. But she's only 18, not even 18 yet. But anyway. She's an amazing young lady. And they all, they all my grandchildren know God. Even my children know God. It's time for them to stand up and do their own. Grandma can't do it anymore. And I told them, you're on your own. You've got to get your own job. You've got to get your own money. Because my money is my money now. What's left of it. I don't think I have much, but whatever I have, I share. But anyway, I mean, I, 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 just, I just love I love children, all children. But like I said, I get intimidated. It's like, oh, I need fifty dollars, or I need a hundred dollars, or I. The need is always there. Now I don't hear many. I want, but I hear a lot of needs, and I'm trying to fulfill the children with their needs. And I usually make them work for whatever it is they give. I may not get the money back, but. That's the way it goes. I don't know which mother and grandmother whatever gets their money back. It's not usual. Not usual. But when the need is there, the need is there. Mama always comes through, or grandma or somebody. And I heard a man once say, there should never be a grandmother. They spoil the children. <laughs> but you know, it's the time of life that we all want our little babies. We love these babies. Every baby that's on earth is, is created by God and it has a destination. It has a time. It could be a few, few weeks. It could be a long
know, there could be 100 years, we don't know. But each one has its time to get to where they have to go. And it's a unique, it's so unique to watch them grow and to flourish and to learn. It's like when they first sing their ABCs. It's, it's such a wonderful thing watching a little one, ABC. And now my granddaughter, uh, her dog, which is my great granddaughter, she can count to 10. And she does it fluently. And she had this thing that you couldn't get away from her mother. For two years, you could never leave her mother's side, screaming, crying, whatever. See, her time was spent with the child for two years. Then all of a sudden, the school, it was time for school for the baby. Now she's learning everything there is to learn. So there's a time for all things. Don't be discouraged because you don't feel like this is the right time. Don't be discouraged because something happens in your life that moves your life somewhere where you don't want to be or something like that. Don't be afraid of that because your special time will be here. You just keep praying, keep trusting God, keep doing what God wants you to do. And if it's right, do it. If it's wrong, your heart will move, you'll start feeling funny, you'll say, gee, I don't think I should do that. And the Holy Spirit will tell you, not this time. Not this time. Do it next time, maybe. But right now, you do what I'm asking you to do. And you know what? I just thank God for all of this, the inspiration that he's given me and shown me. And, you know, you don't get much sleep when God speaks at night. <laughs> you wind up talking to yourself. And it's not just that I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to everyone that has ever asked me or or been with me, or whatever. And of course, my mind keeps going back to my son when he passed last year, uh, over a year ago, Mother's Day, he passed away. But I thank God for that day, because it was a blessing. It was his time. He should have gone a long time before that. But if he had, he would have went straight to hell. And that's a terrible thing to say. But he would have went straight to hell because his mind was not on God. It was on everything else but God. And then when he got into a serious accident, his mind changed. God changed him. God gave him a heart that he has. God saved him. He saved him with all that was to be saved. And that's why never wonder what your child or whoever is not going in the right way. God will move that child or person or whatever, whoever you're praying for, to where it should be. Because each one of us parents, each one of us people, have tied someone to our skirt, to our Bible. We've tied them to the Bible. Because it's all been said, we're all missionaries. We're all on a mission. And we all do whatever it is God calls us to do. If it's to get food, if it's to do whatever it is to do, if it's to pray, or if it's to, to fast, whatever, God will speak to your heart. He will give you time to learn to do whatever you need to do in life. And sometimes we don't always understand the word time. But after a while, you get so, well, I better watch my time. I might go and have tomorrow. Because he didn't promise me tomorrow. Heck, he didn't promise me today. He got me out of bed, though. And I thank him for that. I thank him for that. I got out of bed and I came and I'm doing what he wants me to do. He wants you to stand. He also wants me to tell you and everyone that you can be saved, you can be sanctified, you can be delivered, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I just ask right now for each and every one of you, consider in your heart, because last week we had speaker tell us to close our eyes, think of our father, or think of our mother, or think of someone that you have lost or passed. Okay. I don't like to say they're lost because they're not lost. God has them in the palm of his hand. All of our families are in the palm of God's hand, whether we're alive or we've passed on to be with him. But I always believe in my heart that each and every one of us can tie someone to God's apron skirt. And he will deliver them safely in his arms one day. 
And that's what we all have to look forward to. Our, his arms one day. We all don't like to use the word death, but it's not death. It's a transition. It's a transition. He takes our soul where it needs to go. Yeah. It is so amazing. In fact, I know because I got it. I got once. Childbirth, I got it. They lost me for about five minutes. And it was quite, a, quite an ordeal for me. As a young mother with children, and I was thinking about the children who was taking care of what was going on. And all of the time that I lost the baby, they lost. But either way, the nurse and the doctor said, it wasn't meant for you, it wasn't your time. And I believe that when it is time, he will call me home, and I will go home, but there will be many that are going to be dragging behind me because I've got them all stapled. They're all stapled because they're all going to reach the heaven's gates. I just thank you all for listening, and I thank you all for your attention. I thank you for your heart. I pray to God that if there's any needs that you have, or if you have any sicknesses, or whatever it is, that God will touch you in a special way. Because today is your time. Use it well.